Hello guys, gals, and non-binary pals. This is Cruelty64, back again with another episode of our Pokemon Black and White 2 Randomized Soul Link, joined, as always, by our friend and excellent commentator, Bingeworthy Gaming. How you doing today? Excellent, buddy. How you making it? I am doing... I'm doing alright. I won't say great yet, I won't say bad, I'm doing okay, but... Are we, are we going to do better than we did last episode? That's, that's I can question. definitely say that that's going to be the thing. So, for anyone not in the know, I feel bad for you, because last episode, we had a bit of a uh, drastic shift in the team, because we had our first death, and it was our starters, yeah. the Reshiram duo, killed by a brutal Haxorus on Binge's end that just yeah. absolutely slaughtered him. And I, I take full credit for that. I mean, I didn't have the same preparation in as you had, so I kind of went in a little unprepared. I will allow you to take that take that blame, as it were, but yep. I believe that preparation has been done, and you want to do a quick team recap of who's left? Oh, we also failed our Route 4 encounters last episode. That was also my fault. <laughs> Well, well, again, everything comes down to Dragon Rage. Yeah. When in doubt, Dragon Rage is the blame. So. Yeah, actually, that is the theme of this entire playthrough, given how it started, how it started again, how it started the third time, and now. Yeah. So, uh, I will open up. We've got first pair is the Route 19 duo. In my case, the level 28 uh, Quirky Lee Vanny named 1985 with a scope lens that has tackle, protect, bug bite, and razor leaf. I'm actually thinking of giving it strength soon. Oh, that's actually pretty good. Do you have strength? Yes, we both we did both get strength after the uh, the sewer encounter. I forgot all about that. As, okay, as well, we I linked up with that Pokemon. My Route 19 encounter was level 25 Prowler. That's my bug poison type dust stocks. No item currently, but I did pick up some cool items off screen, so I will probably put Black Sludge is probably what I'm going to put on him. Um, That's a then good I have plan Gust, and a good level. Yeah, I think so too. Gust Psybeam, Protect, and Moonlight. So Psybeam replaced Confusion, and Moonlight's the newest move. And yeah, nice. he's looking pretty good now. Very well done. Uh, next up, I've got the Castelia City Encounter, which is still Xbox 360, the level 26 Naughty Maynack Trick with Spark, Thunder Wave, Quick Attack, and Howl. That's excellent. And he's paired up with the level 26 Wiccan. That's the Fire-type Growlithe. He's got an adamant nature. No item, but I do have the Charcoal, so we will be putting the Charcoal on him or the EVO Light. I haven't quite decided yet. Um, intimidates the ability, so obviously he's going to lower the attack of our Poe, our Poe, our foe. Uh, Leer, Fire Fang, Takedown, and Flame Wheel, so his moveset is, is increased as well. We're going to be fighting Poe's in this episode from uh, from <laughs> Ocarina of Time. Yeah, what is it, Zelda? <laughs> yeah. Man, that makes me want to replay Ocarina of Time. Uh, Do it. And then, I'll watch it. And then the last pair is, I've got three dogs, the level 22 Skip Loom, who does have the Eviolite and is still relaxed nature with Poison Powder, Synthesis, Stun Spore, and Bullet Seed. Perfect. And that's from Flossessi Ranch, and it's linked up with May at level 25. Water type Milotic holding the Mystic Water, which makes sense. Marvel scales the ability Recover Twister, Water Pulse, and Captivate. Nice, you got Captivate. That's a good one. I do have Captivate. So, my team is 25 and up. I do have Wiccan at level 26. Um, that means yeah. I'm technically the under, the kind of underleveled one here because three dogs still only 22. Yeah, but I heard you say a level 28 in there, though. I did, true. I mean, that's... Well, I'm just outside Berg's Gym, man. Where are you at? I am going right up to Berg's Gym right now, and if you are ready to hop in, I fought, like, two trainers in there already uh, last oh, episode. Make sure uh, well, I got. I got to one. Make sure you scared me. I mean, yeah. Did you grab the fresh water off of uh, off of Clyde? I did not, but I am now. Well done. Very proud of you. Um, I don't know if you know this, but I, what route is it? Was it Route Four where we uh, forfeited that encounter? You said yes. Okay, so Route Four. Do you remember where I told you I fought a girl there with uh, Sock and Hitmonlee? Yes, that trainer is farmable. <laughs> I was just going to say, I don't know if you know this. Yes. Uh, but. So there is a, it should be a Pokemon breeder. And I'm not sure if it's also a breeder in uh, in Black 2 that I'm playing. But I do know that the 
trainer at the beginning of uh, of the route is farmable. I used to do it yeah. all the time. I had no clue about that, and when I was going back in there, I was looking for somewhere to grind. I ran into her. I was like, man, I'm quite certain I already beat this girl. And then she had the sock and hit my lead, and I was like, I definitely beat this girl. I was like, did I not save it or something? Like, what happened? I should have mentioned that. I wanted to last <laughs> episode, and I absolutely forgot. And speaking of, yeah. thing, speaking of things I did forget to mention last episode, I did do something on my own recently that I'm kind of proud of, which is I uh, I completed my third playthrough of Fire Emblem Three Houses. I tend to every so often just decide to re-download and beat that game on a different save file. Nice. Despite having four different story routes, I've only done two. But I had a... In each one, I've had, like, a specific purpose. First one was just... I was playing the game with uh, with no experience, and I was like, I wonder what this this is the story route I want to go down. Yep. Uh, second playthrough was with a different house because there's a different character that I really liked and wanted to side with him, see what his thoughts were or what his uh, motivations were. Mm-hmm. But the third time, I this is kind of spoiler territory. I'm going to go into, and I highly Get recommend. Into it. I highly recommend anyone, even people who have not played a Fire Emblem game before, if you're a fan of RPGs, I recommend giving Three Houses a try. It is an excellent game. Um, But at a certain point in the story, so uh, at the beginning of the story, you pick between one of three houses based on, like, what, uh, what students are part of the house and the leader of the house and, you know, certain, uh, certain students are exclusive to certain houses and stuff like that. But the majority of the roster is recruitable based on your stats. So, so for example, there's a uh, there's a kid named Felix. He is a member of the Blue Lions house. But if you're part of another house and you've got really good speed and sword skill, then you uh, then he if you talk to him and give him the option to like join up with you, he will do that. Or if you just befriend him enough, he will just outright come and join up with your house. Nice. But the uh, the spoiler territory I'm going into is if you side with the Black Eagles house, the house of Edelgard, the uh, the heir to the Adrestian Empire, there's a certain point in the story where she betrays the the church that you've been like working for the entire time, and you have okay. and you have the option to side with her or not. And both times I've played through uh, the Black Eagles route, I've sided with her because I don't trust the church at all. They're shady as heck. <laughs> and I did this uh, third playthrough with the specific intention of recruiting every single student I could to the Black Eagles house to see what they would say after I betrayed the church. Yeah. It did not disappoint. <laughs> it took a... I do not recommend trying that for your first playthrough because it is... Like, to get all of the stats that you need to uh, to do exactly that, you know, recruit all the different students you can from all the different houses, takes an absurd amount of, like, proper preparation and knowledge of the game's mechanics that you kind of only get in either future playthroughs or looking really deep into it. So I... The proper preparations, you're... you're uh, I'm using a, alliteration. <laughs> I'm using amazing alliteration. Um, Excellent. But it was it was absolutely worth it at the end of the day, and I I did what anyone does in a modern Fire Emblem game, which is put way too much attention into all of the shipping that you can do, because modern okay. Fire Emblem is modern Fire Emblem is sixty percent uh, tactical RPG, forty percent dating sim. And depending on the game, that balance is skewed. In three houses, it definitely leans more towards the uh, the actual like tactical RPG elements. Okay. Because so let's get the cruelty sixty four stamp of approval. That's what you're telling me. Yes, I will. I will make that the first game that I'm not actually playing on the channel that gets my stamp of approval. Play it, and also play Very Awake, nice. play Fire Emblem Awakening on the 3DS if you're curious. That one's all so good. Uh, so I am up at Berg, if you are as well. No, I was standing still while I was listening to your Oh, dang. <laughs> I'm, I'm just joking. No, I got a couple jugglers I'm working on here. All right. I will wait for you. Um, a lot of bird-type Pokemon, man. You're running into a lot of birdies? Yeah, one guy had a Pidgeot and a Swallow. Really? 
Yeah. One guy had an Electivire and something else. A lot of power. This is going to be scary, especially with how it started last episode. Absolutely. Um, May is now level 26. Nice. I really should give Three Dog more attention just to evolve him and then evolve her and be done with it. Well, my team is all female. Didn't notice that. No. Um, I've been doing some preparation on my own for the gen lock that I'm about to do off stream on my own. And yes. I was kind of happy with myself because I kept getting like surprisingly lucky with female starters. I think my... Uh, I know my Mudkip that I got in Emerald was a female, and at, when I started uh, Pokemon Black, I got a female Oshawott, but then I lost the first rival fight, so I decided to just restart anyway. And I know the Nuzlocke doesn't begin until you get your Pokeballs, but I was I was like, okay, if you're going to lose the first thing, I'm just going to bail. Yeah, that's, that's fair. Either my luck is that bad and I don't want to test it, or... Your nature and stats are bad. <laughs> but, uh... All right. I'm in Berg's little, uh, little paint hut here. Yes. So, as we... If you're ready to fight Berg, I am as well. I think I'm as ready as I'm going to be. Let's do it, then. I actually have what is usually his ace leading. Uh, Levani. I just fought a Levani. Really? I really did. That would spook me out if we were able to fight each other in... Uh, at the end of this emulator. Oh, we definitely can. We just do it on, like, Showdown or something. Oh, yeah, true. I I always forget that Showdown's a thing. It's a thing. I have a, uh... Wow, okay, he led with Vanilla, and I was about to be all cocky because I misread it as Frillish. <laughs> and I was going to be like, oh, I'm going to one-shot you with a Razor Leaf, but nah. Um, yeah. so... Ooh, what the hell, man? What happened? Uh, nothing major, just Fire Fang's missing for some reason. It's kind of bugging me. Has a 95 accuracy and it will always screw you over when you're using it. You know how they are. That's why I, I always lean towards 100. percent It might it might not like if I I'll go flamethrower over fire blast any day. Later. Absolutely, could not agree more. I'm like man, if it's like 70, it, it, honestly, if it's 95 or less, it's zero. <laughs> you know what kind of bugs me regarding that? There is one type of uh, Pokemon move that just way too many of their attacks are uh, are not 100 accuracy. Rock types. Yep. Like, every good rock type move has awful accuracy. Yep. Oh, uh, Burr's got a Growlithe. Nice, that's who I'm currently using. Oh, he's got a Lipard. Ooh. Reminding me of 16 Candles. May she roam the, <laughs> roam the wastelands in peace. Uh, Lipard. So Lipard's dark, correct? Right. Lipard is dark, yes. Um, I'm thinking to go to Prowler. That kind of makes sense. Okay, that did a lot more damage than I expected. I'm going to pop something. I'm going to go to Prowler. Um, wish I didn't have such a like consistent uh, weakness to fire in this team. I'm hoping... I was thinking about it earlier today, how many... Like, what locations we have between between Gym 3 and Gym 4 to go to uh, as far as catching Pokemon. Yep. Oh, this is his ace, and it's level 24. Okay. Um, okay, that thing just hit me with a critical hit Fire Fang, and I have 5 HP left. Goddamn, dude. Xbox 360 just almost got the Red Ring of Death. <laughs> By the way, I slapped the uh, Black Sludge on Prowler. That just reminded what me I should have I should have thrown more yeah. items on uh, on Xbox 360. I'm not sure what, but I'm sure there would have been something. Oh, uh, that's gonna hurt. Thanks. Caught me with a pursuit. <laughs> oh, red at the end. He read me. That's always really painful, and it feels really bad. Yeah, I'm gonna go flame blue. Flame blue's not gonna do as much, but it's gonna hit. Man, this okay. This thing is weirdly tanky. This freaking Growlithe. Like, it's hitting like a truck, and it is not missing any of its attacks. It's paralyzed, and yet has hit every single one. My, my uh, Wiccan has been paralyzed twice so far in this episode. Just fully, or... fully paralysis, yeah, well, or just general paralyzed? General paralyzed. That's why before we started, I uh, was smart and I picked up paralyzed heals, because I'm always paralyzed, man. I just got hit by another critical hit, and this time survived with 3 HP. Now, this guy is notorious for crits. I'm looking at a Weavile. That's his ace. Ugh. But I... Oh, Torment. Fuck you. 
I did nasty plot. Uh oh, spaghettios. I did barely survive against that growlith. Freaking yikes! I I need to pick something up that can handle fire types. I could have switched out and switched back, but I wouldn't want to risk any of my uh, other two against that fire fang. I hear you, man. And Swimmer Bob is defeated. Oh, okay. I just, I just beat Juggler Kim as well. <laughs> that fight was freaking rough, and I always forget what is what might be my least favorite Pokemon ability to deal with, which is Aftermath. Yep. Because his last Pokemon was a Stunky. Wow! That's a good TM. <laughs> oh boy, what'd you get? TM76 Roar of Time. Seriously? <laughs> yeah. I didn't know if anybody could learn that goddamn thing, but let's find out real quick. Same here. I just got TM76 Flame Burst, which I'm actually pretty sure. Hey. I'm pretty sure uh, at least Levani should be able to learn. Yeah. It's too bad it's a special attack, but still. Oh. So it's a dragon type, 150. I mean, that would have been perfect for Reshiram, but. If it could have learned it. I mean, I'm sure it could have. It, I'll tell you what, the fact that Prowler can learn it <laughs> tells me Reshiram should have been able to learn that shit. I mean, yes, but TM76 is uh, is initially Struggle Bug. Oh, is it? Yes. Okay, that makes more sense then. So it, it, the um, the eligibility is still the same. It still recognizes it as Struggle Bug. Yes. Gotcha. I, I think that's why we've had like some, some bizarre instances. Perfect. I'm not going to put that on him right away because I feel like I could use that for like somebody else in the future. Also, by the way, uh, one of the TMs I picked up off screen was Ice Burn. You picked up Ice Burn as a TM. As a TM, T uh, TM70. Okay, uh, that is the TM for Flash. So, yeah, exactly. So, dear, dear bejesus, that is that could be insanely powerful. It could work out. I need an Ice type. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, Ice Burn is a, uh, it's a two-turn move, but it's also really powerful. It's, uh, it's Curum White's signature attack. Yeah, and I think, generally speaking, anybody can learn Flash, right? So, Pretty much, yeah. If only I had that, because I think Xbox 360 <laughs> can learn it. Okay. Yeah. All right, man, so where are we off to now? Probably back to Route 4? Yes, we are heading back to Route 4, and once we do, we have a battle coming up with Colress, and he's also going to clear that uh, that Crustal Blockade that was giving us some nice. problems that we didn't mention. Oh, this guy, yeah. Let's get take a look at your Pokemon. Colress is a bit of an oddball, but I'll go into more of that as he appears more often in the in the uh, episodes. I will say yeah. he's got a very funny uh, not catchphrase but the way he says a certain line I believe in the anime where he says I disagree and it's just <laughs> it's very entertaining the way he specifically delivers it. For sure. Um, let's see. We are on to Route 4 yeah. and Is also... there any other like close encounters by Route 4? There's uh there's a few. I was gonna again forgot to mention this earlier. Oh, I don't think I fought this uh, this breeder lady. That's repeatable. But um, where'd you grind at then? Most of my grinding was actually done in the Castellia City patch of grass. That's probably smart. Yeah. I mean, it worked, but your idea meant you got more um, got money with each following uh, encounter. Or You're goddamn following. right I did. <laughs> I stocked up on Pokeballs, I got potions, man, I'm ready to go. See, you got you get like You get like 500 and something dollars every time, right? And I, I just babbled her a bunch. She's, uh, her, she led, yeah, she led with a Persian. Not bad, man, that's Jen. One of the, uh, one of the fun things I always like to see in randomizers is... A lot of the time, not always, but a lot of the time when you... Okay, maybe I did fight this lady because she's got a Persian and a Tornadus, and that seems familiar. I remember uh, the Tornadus. Yeah, I remember the Tornadus as well. Um, but Yes, yes, because you said uh, you had a farmable Tornadus. I yeah, this. okay, I did fight this lady before. Um, thank you for having a better memory than me. <laughs> I tried, but... So, uh... I lost my train of thought, but I do have something to... Oh, I know what I was going to talk about. So, locations near Route 4 that we can pick up Pokemon and potentially grind if need be. So, there's, uh, there's a 
a lot of different places we can go to for catching Pokemon before the fourth gym. Okay. The closest one is going to be the uh, Desert Resort, which is not too far off and to the left. So we, okay. can, we can pick up Pokemon there. We can go into the Ruins of Relic Castle, which is an option, but there is a potentially better... You know, uh, remember when we went to the sewers and there was the way to get to Relic Passage, but we avoided it because uh, you can go there later? Yep. So it's the same thing with Relic Castle, where you get another entrance to Relic Passage and then Relic Castle, and there's higher levels there, and there is going to be a... Uh, a set Volcarona encounter, which is going to be traded for whatever we end up finding. But it's level 35, and at that point in the game, it's really good. So, if if need be, we can go to uh, to the Relic Castle entrance here and just get something lower level. But okay. I would think it's a better idea to wait for both of those. Gotcha. And then, other than those, there is also the... Uh, we can go to Route 16 once we get to Nimbasa City which also has the entrance to Lost Lorne Forest. And then on top of all of that, you can get to Route 5 early and do some stuff there. Excellent. So all kinds of encounters come. Oh, yeah. Lots of stuff. Uh, okay, he's got a Magneton, and I'm not sure the best way to handle that. Trinity! Uh, mm. How, how, how? How should I deal with Ooh, the Trinity? Ooh, Archeops. That could be... What's Archeops? It's rock? Archeops is rock and flying. But okay, keep... there is a uh, there's a special quirk with Archaeops that De defiant or uh, defeatist. Defeatist, that's it. So Archaeops is a pessimist by nature, where you drop it to half health and its attack and speed go by half as well. Well, if you drop it to zero health, it just disappears altogether. Oh, you know that? better I. How did I not think of that? <laughs> that's your fun fact of the day, guys. Brought to you by Binge Worthy Gaming. Make sure you should have said this at the beginning of the video make sure you like subscribe leave a comment click that bell and make sure you do the same on binge's channel as well and he will give you plenty of facts of the day about fishing up charizards <laughs> absolutely and also cruise ships that you can just get free tickets to well i think bill's the aficionado on that so. you know what fair uh, this is, this Magneton is not being fun to me. It paralyzed me pretty early, and it's not getting hurt by this sandstorm, but I certainly am. Surprised it hasn't hey, that, that, that's, Is that Chorus' Pokemon? Yes, this is Chorus' second, which is actually appropriate, because he usually would have, like, a Magnemite or a Magneton or a Magnezone. Uh, yeah, sure. His, his whole theme is, like, steel and electric, because he's very much a technically-minded science type. Yeah, those, those science nerds are always rocking he, Voltorbs and Magnemites. And... He mentioned his uh, his the theme of his research is bringing out the potential in Pokemon. So try to figure Very out the vague. best. Definitely vague, and you could go about it in a lot of ways, which is part of his whole. I'm not sure I should say character arc, but it's kind of his uh, what he talks about a lot. Gotcha. Ooh, citrus berries. Based on the fact that he just gave me a protein, it probably means that the dude loves EV training. It's possible. I mean, that is how you bring out the potential in Pokemon. Effort values are all about that. For sure, man. That took me years to figure out that shit. It took me years to figure out EV training, and I still haven't entirely figured out IV training either. I just know it takes a lot of breeding to get right. Yeah. I'm not bad at it now. I think, uh, yeah, I was talking to a friend of mine. I was like, I know nowadays it's a lot easier to do. Nowadays, man, like, you can take a Pokemon that's not even bred well, and you can turn it into, like, a perfectly competitive Pokemon. Yeah, especially with the introduction of mints. I know that's definitely been, like, a, <clears throat> like a big thing that I... I certainly appreciate that in uh, Sword and Shield as far as, like, little changes. Do you know what I appreciate? What? The ability capsule. Yes, the, uh... That gives you the ability to, like, switch over to your hidden ability, right? Or your secondary? It's, uh, it's, uh, that one actually might be the secondary. I think I got this wrong. But there's a new one that you can actually get the hidden abilities out to. Oh, so. uh, that's so much easier than how it is in, like, it's, other games. It's way better. So, like, if you were to catch a 
shiny Pokemon, like generally they're not gonna have great stats, right? Yeah, but now you can now, shift them a lot easier. I imagine. Much easier. Um, I'm gonna skip the breedable, the repeatable encounter and just move forward. Oh, I should try to give Xbox 360 an item of some sort. Who's the repeatable encounter here? Uh, sorry, repeatable trainer I meant. I went back to the Pokemon Center after fighting Cole Rest, and then I uh, moved forward. I I'll give... Um, I think I will give you the... Let's give him a quick claw. It's probably not a bad idea. Um, the claw is not bad. Quick claw is always useful. Help you out in a lot of... I'm really digging the black sludge man. It's essentially leftover Prowler, right? Yeah. Wish I had a poison type and a black sludge to go with it, because <laughs> definitely would be useful. So, uh, so while we're on Route Four, I can give you a little bit of a history lesson on this place, because in I mentioned last episode that it's a location that's different in Black and Black Two and White Two, but I didn't mention how. Okay. Because in... Okay, this guy's got a Charmeleon. Yikes. Um, Harrison? Yeah. Harrison's come back to haunt me this time and not you. Oh, you'll be fine. Harrison's a nice fella. <laughs> yeah, tell that to the critical hit that ended his life. <laughs> Sorry, critical hits, because that was Gen 1 multi-hit attack AI. Yeah. I took brutal. him out first, because I'm fighting... I was fighting a Charmeleon and an Ampharos. Just, I guess, why not? Um, but, so, uh, so in between, uh, so in Black and White, Route 4 was the exact same in both games. It was just, like, a, a construction-type area that was mostly desert. Still had a sandstorm going. Mm -hmm. And in, in the, uh... In the alternate timeline between the two games, as it were, like if the timeline branched at a certain point, the uh, in the Black Two timeline, they, you know, they built a bunch of houses up, and you'll notice like apartment buildings and such. Yeah. Whereas anyone watching and you watching when you edit this video, in the White Two timeline, the uh, they discovered a bunch of like ancient ruins of like an old city. So they halted construction and just kind of hollowed out these locations. So there's people actually like hanging out in these old ass houses, but yeah. but it gives a completely different feel between the two locations, and it's interesting. It's one of the things I wish uh, I wish was done more with the version differences between you know two different, essentially the same game. I know there's always going to be, you know, different legendaries for the box, and there's always going to be uh, version exclusives, but play more with, like, different locations and different uh, stuff going on in them. Probably takes a lot of programming effort, but it is really interesting, at least to me. Yeah, definitely. Uh, man, I cannot wait to find some new stuff in, in these different locations. But we are hitting the 28-minute mark, so should we try to... Should we try to like blitz through to Nimbasa City and then uh, and then save there? And next episode we'll do some either next episode or off screen we'll do the the optional type stuff. Yeah, I think it sounds fair. Um, by the way, this is the third time Wiccan has been paralyzed. Um, is that this episode or just in general? This episode. Oh. <laughs> He's always paralyzed, man. Just, and I'll count, I'll count four because there was a Growlithe on your screen that was paralyzed as well, right? So. Yes, I will count that as, I would count that as four. Um, so so you're, you're heading north then? Yes, I'm doing a little bit of uh, exploration in these houses. Just, just, I did the same thing. Um, there's some trainers like in like the dirt area. Yeah, they're, they're kind of running around in different uh, locations depending on the version. Yeah, are we taking them on? I am taking them on as I go. Okay, because it's like it feels like I'm backtracking a little bit, but there's some gooey looking dudes here. You might be, but at the very least, it'll give us some EXP. The EXP's good. I just don't think we're going to make it to Nimbasa like you hoped. Ooh, there's a. Uh, just ran into an Audino. You know what? Since we are hitting 29, maybe finish off whatever trainer you're fighting right now, because I'm in the middle of one as well. And then cool. just, just head there. Through. We'll try to make it to Nimbasa by the, ep by the episode's conclusion. Shit! <laughs> oh no. 
the Zapdos. Oh boy. He's exerting pressure, so Prowler's not the guy. Milotic's not the guy. So I think it's gotta be Wigan, right? Uh, I guess that's probably- the, the, the other two will get hit with like, you know, something Thunder and something Drill Pack probably, so. I mean, the Zapdos probably at least has Pack. Worst case scenario, probably has like Air Cutter and those are both yikes. Uh, yeah, has Thunder Shock, I know that now. That's terrifying. Uh, Freaking yikes, man. All right, let's see. Thunder. Oh, God damn it! Oh, no. <laughs> no. It, it, it's, it's not as bad as it sounds, man, but that's like the fourth time Wiccan's been paralyzed. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh, Wiccan, what are so you doing? You're there. Yeah. God, I hate being paralyzed. You don't even know, dude. I had so many paralyzed heals, I was prepared for this, but apparently it wasn't. Well, the game God is trying damn. to give you something to spend all that cash on. Yeah. I'm just going to heal him up real quick. Make sure he's nice and fresh. Oh, sure. God, man. That's literally like four or five times just for Wiccan this episode. Wiccan just loves eating that eating that electricity. He's... Did I say four or five times, or did I mean five or six times? He's paralyzed again. <sighs> it's kind of hilarious, honestly. Oh, he does have Peck, too, so... He's a nightmare for my other two Pokemon. But yep. thankfully, he's dead. Okay. Good Ooh. job, Wiccan. Nice. Good experience. And his next Pokemon is... Yeah. Ooh. Should move be deleted for Whirlwind. Oh, right. Let's There's a... a look. I forgot Join Avenue. There's a thing in between these. I'm actually okay. I don't want Whirlwind. I don't think we have to do anything in Join Avenue right now, but at least it's going to be dialogue. Next Pokemon is a spinner rack. Okay, cool. I think Wiccan's got this. Wiccan does have that, but if you need to, I'm sure Prowler or May does as well. Yeah, for sure. Although the thing had Nightshade, that's a little scary. Alright, so this dude is defeated, so you're just gonna hightail it to the north? Yes. There is a place we're gonna have to run into in between. It doesn't entirely matter to join Avenue. Just blitz through it, deal with the stuff there that's pretty quick. Okay. Uh, I'm just gonna heal. Oh, actually, you know what? There's a guy that can heal me. So. Yes, in one of the houses. Yeah. Well, I waste it, right? Yeah, I mean, get free heals instead of waste your healing items. Now, it looks like there's two paths that lead north. Does it matter which one I go? Yes, go to the, uh, go to the one... Uh, take the go to the right and then and then up. I believe that's where to go. All right. oh, no. You know, Join Avenue was kind of like a when this game came out and I was playing it. It was kind of cool to experience with all of the all of the. Uh, I had some more people I knew who were like in person playing Pokemon. Yeah. Especially my girlfriend at the time, but I, as cool as it is now, it's uh, has less luster as the later Pokemon games have come out, and people play less and less of these, obviously. Uh, my, my special phrase is, yo. <laughs> my special phrase is, there's, so you got two phrases you need to put in, and then you also need a title. And now I kind of so, forget what my title was. Oh, it was Singer. Because I'm going to have a bunch of song references. So my first phrase was yo, my second is mama. Yo mama! <laughs> <laughs> How very 90s of you. Thank you very much, man. Although I was born in the 80s, I grew up in the 90s. Don't yep. forget it. I, I can only technically say I'm a 90s kid because I'm 98 and specifically end of 98. Doesn't count, my guy. Hey. What is my title? Um, master. <laughs> I believe the first time I played this game, my title actually was Master. Might have uh, not Master, it's Master. Yeah, you're, you're just Master <laughs> with an A. Exactly. All right, cool. That was a waste of time. So continue. Just continue forward. straight forward, and you will make it to Nimbasa City. Do you promise? I absolutely promise. I know because I'm that's the, cru that's the cruelty guarantee. 
Oh man, that is catchy. I should start using that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we're in the Mbasa City, man. Yes, we are. And uh, if you want to finish up by heading into the Pokemon Center, where would that sucker be? Uh, that would be head immediately. I got from... it. I got it. Ro roam around long enough, you'll find a Pokemon Center. Yeah, that's true. If it's that hidden, then there's going to be a problem. Exactly. But in the Pokemon Center, there's a guy uh, to the right of the of Nurse Joy who will give you a big pile of red shards, which is Indeed. which is really useful because the shard tutors were still a thing in this game. Excellent. In fact, the next one is in the next city and takes a bunch of red shards. Game design. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, that is going to be the end of our episode. Next time, we will, I think, be doing a lot of stuff, like, surrounding these locations, getting, hopefully, new encounters and stuff like that. And uh, that next episode will be on Bingeworthy Gaming's channel, so make sure, like I said, head over there, give him a follow, like, subscribe, smile, and comment. Not in that order, though. <laughs> exactly in that order, please. Thank you. Okay. All right. My mistake. <laughs> well, uh, in any case, I hope y'all had a wonderful time, and we will see you next episode. Peace out, guys. Peace out.